Here's all your lines. First is the bridle. It goes across the um, rear quarters of the boat for your um, attach your mainsail to. Now topping lift, uh, which has a little carabiner on it. Our main sheet, which uh, has the wooden block attached to it. Uh, our jib sheets, uh, which has the little sprung hook there on it. Then we've got two plain lines. One's a 6mm. That's your throat halyard. So it's just a, a plain line, braided, nothing on the ends. And then we've got a, a 4mm braided line, again with nothing on the ends, and that's your jib halyard. And then we have one other line, which is the yard halyard, and that has the, the little saddle to go onto the wire for the sliding gunter. Uh, anchor line, stays, Baler painter. So the painting attached to the front of the boat. You need a tow, so it's a nice colourful float. Let's start by rigging the mast. The first thing is um, just lay the mast down, the, the cleats down, so that's the forward part of the mast. We should have this little retainer here pointing upwards. We'll come to the top of the mast and I've got the three lines, uh, both my yard halyard and my throat halyard and my Topping lift. The topping lift, I'm just uh, threading it through from the, from the top here through so that what's going to be up on the top side here is the carabiner uh, because that's going to come back to the end of the boom so we want that coming out of the, the rear. Now we're going to put our uh, yard halyards in and our throat halyard. So the yard heli is at the top of the yard and the throat heli is at the bottom of the yard. So the throat heli, which uh, is just a plain piece of rope, just goes uh, in over the bottom block. And all these heli, when I've sort of uh, threaded them through, I just pull the, just a very simple knot in the bottom. Next we have the uh, yard heli. So the um, saddle needs to be facing to the aft or rear side of the mast. So we're going to come in from that side with the line. Now the front side. So our saddle is there. Next we've got the jib halyard, which is our 4mm braided line. Um, this is no different end to end, so it doesn't really matter which way we do it. And we're going to thread that through the uh, block on our forestay. And again, we just put a, a knot in the end before we uh, put our stays on top of the mast. Now on the boat, just make sure the uh, leather on the mast is um, at least sitting down to where the painters are. Uh, make sure it's sitting uh, all the way into our uh, keel. There's a little square hole, square up on the bottom of the mast to line them up. Make sure that we have the uh, retainer for the boom jaws facing aft. Okay, check out the stays. That we've got our four stay coming out the front and our side stays looking okay. And now it's just a matter of grabbing our side stays and attaching them. Second stay, you're going to, have to put a bit of pressure on to get it down. Right, locked in. Now, if we look up, everything's going to look like it's a bit of a mess, but that's fine. Next thing is the uh, four stay. So the lacing line on the four stay is simply loop down into this fitting. Do that about. Three or four times until we just got a um, maybe four or five times until we just got a good length left over, and then we finish it all off with half hitches. So the half hitch is uh, simply around the back of the stay, back through itself. And then pulling those up. 
So once I've uh, finished the half hitches, uh, I take the tail, run it back through the middle, and then pull it down tight, and that just holds it, make sure it doesn't come loose while you're sailing. So now I've just uh, sorted out all my halyards. Uh, so I've got the uh, yard and the throat halyard sort of just hanging down the front of the, uh, the back side of the mast there. Uh, I've got my topping lift just hanging over the side, and I've just taken my jib halyard and just wound it around the forestay, so uh, that keeps that out of the way. Now it's for the sail. To uh, wrap the sail up, I just uh, start rolling at the boom until I get up to the yard, and then I uh, fold the yard in over the boom, and then uh, fold the top of the sail in, um, making sure the battens are lying along the length of the boom, and the line that's uh, just being tied around the mall is the uh, lacing line, which is attached to the um, uh, at, at the throat point on the luff, and uh, so that's easily accessible and use it just to tie up the bundle. So unroll the sail and um, have it all nice and free before you try to put it in the boat. Grab the yard and the boom, and then lift it into the boat, um, putting the boom jaws in around the. Um, mast. So the boom is boom jaws are now around the mast. They just sort of really sit on this uh, small saddle here. And the boom is sitting down here. We're going to put on the toppy lift, topping lift now, and that'll just hold the end of the boom for us to uh, get the rest of the sail. So the topping lift is tied up on the starboard side cleat. That's so that you have access to it when you're wanting to reef because uh, you're wanting to pull the topping lift on a little bit so you want it on the starboard side of your boat that way um, you have right of ways in the water you're going to start the sailing craft while you're uh, putting your reef in so the topping lift is just attached uh, directly onto the saddle on the end of the boom see it running up clear to the top of the mast Next is to uh, put the jaws of the yard in, um, make sure you're getting them up the right way. You're running this uh, line here with parallel beads, parallel line, uh, just through the other side of the jaw, down onto here, it sort of figure eights around and finish with a half hitch on one end, and that's all that we need to do on that side. Now we're going to start to put the uh, halyards on. First let's put on the throat halyard. That's just attached uh, with a bowline. Make sure the bowline has enough uh, clearance to get lay up the um, up the yard, uh, so the bowline, the knot itself, doesn't get caught when the yard goes vertical between the yard and the mast. Um, the line, of course, is the bottom one coming out of the um, aft side of the top of the mast. So take your throat halyard, and the throat halyard goes down to the starboard side cleat uh, because this is the main one you want to control when you're reefing. So our yard halyard is just attached to this um, sliding gunter line up the yard with the saddle. Again that's going up to the top of the mast, remember that's the top Halyard going through the uh, top block and it should be um, going through from the rear through to the front and then we're going to bring this line down to this port side cleat. So it's time to partially raise the mainsail now so that we can do the luff lacing. You'll notice that I've got the yard on that starboard side, that's so that it goes on the other side of the topping lift because of course on the top, the topping lift's on the port side so we want to make sure the yard is coming out on the starboard side and doesn't get caught under that topping lift. When, so you're going to start with this uh, yard halyard and as you pull on it you'll notice that it's really just trying to pull up the throat end of the, um, of the yard. So what you need to do is while you're pulling on it, if you just retain this other end of the yard you'll see that it will invert up and then the saddle will start to slide up the line and it can then be pulled up from the top. So I've pulled the yard all the way up just using the yard halyard at the moment and uh, you'll see up there, zoom in, 
that the saddle's right at the top end of that wire and that's just sort of reaping, reefing position um, but it just keeps the luff down lower so that we can now put into the luff lacing. So attached to the luff of the mainsail about halfway up just by the throat just below the jaws here uh, we have the luff lacing. So we start by going around the starboard side of the mast This is uh, a technique that sort of it's sort of reversed. So rather than just keep going around the circle, then we we come back from the way that we approached it. And again, we're going to go around the starboard side of the mast. Back from the starboard through the port. And then we're going to go back around the starboard side of the mast again. And then start at the port on our next lacing. Starboard side of the mast again. Now, we're getting to, you'll notice that there is a crinkle here which is larger than our lacing crinkles. And you'll notice the reinforcing patch on the sail. This is our reefing point, And probably the easiest thing to do at this stage is just to remove that uh, reefing line. So I've now removed that reefing line from the um, uh, reefing crinkle. And uh, so it's still attached to that uh, saddle. And then we'll just clear it out of the way so that we don't uh, get confused when we're doing the rest of the lock line. So I've now pulled on the throat halyard. And that uh, pulls on the bottom of the yard and extends the yard all the way to the top. It also creates all that tension along the luff of the sail as well and pulls the jaws of the boom up under the bottom of that retainer. And the uh, topping lift at the moment is just uh, holding up the end of the boom, that's why it's sitting up so high. And up the top you'll notice that the uh, throat halyard is, sorry, the um, yard halyard is hanging onto that wire but it's sort of poking out of it. So eventually we'll pull that in tight um, so it peaks up the sail properly. So we've finished off our luff lacing now. We'll come down, make sure it uh, hasn't caught any of our halyards and it's just around the mast. You can see the luff is sitting clear of the mast, but you can sort of hear the tension in it, which is what you want. And that comes down, it finishes off just coming through the starboard side of the saddle, running down that sort of port side of the boom. There's a little tube cleat on the side there, it's just run through and cleated off our reefing line in so I can just take that and put it through the reef crinkle. It just feeds down and comes back through the saddle at the bottom and then through this tube cleat on the side of the mast. And we haven't got the reef in, it's sort of just sitting loose. Put the, this is our reefing line off the um, end of the boom, the clue of the sail. You see it looping down into my hand and then it goes through this uh, reefing crinkle, which has got the reinforced patch on it. It's going from the port through to the starboard. Then goes on this uh, starboard side, through the arc of the block. Comes back along the boom to the tube cleat. Make sure it's not too tight, that it's not going to affect the trailing edge of the sail. Right, so that's the sail set with the um, throat halyard, uh, sorry, the um, yard halyard now pulled up tight and the uh, topping lift let off. Uh, you can see the sail was setting quite nicely and um, got to make sure our lacing is not too tight up the top there.
putting in the bridle. So we start from underneath one of the quarters here, come up through one of the holes, through the saddle on the end of the block, down through the hole on the opposite quarter, and um, just used a figure of eight uh, stopper knot. Don't get it too tight right at the moment because remember you've got to put the um, the tiller underneath this. Okay so this is the run of the main sheet so it's um, spliced onto the top of the block it comes up from back to front through the block down from front to black back through the bottom block again from back to front through the top block through to the single block on the bottom of the boom and down to the ratchet block on the bottom of the boat and you should be able to hear the ratchet work when you pull on the main sheet and it uh, doesn't slide the other way when it's leading out so to attach the jib we just start with putting the tack at the foot of the jib um, onto this uh, twist shackle on the bottom and then twist on your hanks on your forestay the halyard is attached to the top of the jib with uh, just a bowline um, make sure you get your bowline down snug uh, to the top as much as possible that gives you as much space to get pull the jib all the way up. Make sure that you're using the uh, halyard line that comes out of the front side of the block. And then we haul up our jib. Make sure you get some good tension on your jib. Your lap should be nice and tight. Um, it doesn't matter if it uh, takes a bit of uh, strain away from the forestay. What you don't want is you, you don't want the uh, luff to sag on this boat because it's hanged to the forestay. That's going to support your luff all the way up as well. Jib is tied off onto the port side cleat and I normally um, wind up the line and tie it off just so it won't interfere with your other lines. So and while you're reefing etc. Now we can attach the jib sheet by um, just attaching the clip into the clue. So your jib sheets run either side of the mast, inside the stays and through the eye on the knee. Tie the two ends of your jib sheets together so that they um, tie into each other so the knots come together and that, that way you'll never have to chase your jib sheet across. Yeah, to put your uh, rudder on, uh, you just need to put your pin tool into your bottom gudgeon first. And then your top one can go in second, being a little bit shorter. You'll notice that the rudder pretty much comes all the way to the ground. So um, don't do this before you back your trailer and down the ramp, otherwise you'll... Um, break the rudder underneath the boat. The tiller goes in under the painter so the main sheet can travel over the top. We can now put the pin in. The pin in to hold the tiller in and uh, we can take the R clip. Little hole in the pin tool where you put the R clip through. That there is just to retain your rudder in case you turn it completely upside down and it won't float off the boat. At this stage you can readjust the length of your bridle uh, so that your main sheet is uh, your main sheet block is just clearing the uh, tiller as it comes across the top. The reason why you want to have the bridle um, reasonably tight is because when you've got the main sheet hard on going up to wind you're going to get a situation with the um, these two blocks coming together. Um, you want a reasonable amount of tension on the blocks 
so that you know we've got a bit of um, banging effect on the sail, but pulling the sail down. And um, if it's if it's too baggy, then then the boom is going to sit up higher than what it needs to. The baler is just lashed to the small eye that's on the side of the centre case. The fluorescent painter is attached to the bow with the shackle, runs up through the bow chock and then just bring it back, wrap up your painter uh, and sort of tie it up in a nice bundle so that the uh, painter won't sort of lead out into the water and start floating behind the boat and get tied up in your centreboard and, uh, and rudder. If I'm carrying the anchor line, typically I just tie it around the base of the mast just around here underneath the painter that way I can uh, feed it out uh, forward of the stay and uh, run it through one of the bow chops. The mainsail was laced onto the boom in the yard in the same way. Both of them start with a bowline that attaches here the um, clue of the sail and this uh, saddle here the bowline goes through there so that fixed sort of holds that back that way and then the lacing proceeds down the sail all the way to the tack and it's not too tight because it shouldn't be trying to deform the sail as it sits against the boom so you can see here that the, the foot of the sail is free against the against the boom now this can be adjusted it comes through the tack point here and then comes forward into that tube cleat so you can just adjust the footing as you need to again at the head of the sail there is another bow line that attaches to the crinkle at the head and the saddle at the top of the yard there. So that keeps the tension of up the left of pulling that uh, head of the sail upwards and then the lacing just comes down the yard and at the last cringle before the throat it's sort of just tied off. I'm using the um, oars while sailing or uh, we'll having them just sitting there in case I need them. They're just still sitting in their uh, oarlocks and they just come forward and I just use a, a bungee here at the um, chain plate to hold them. And finally the main hatch at the front. So these little cams are positioned so the flats against the the hatch itself, the bits of wood at the back are facing down. It's simply put in and then pushing hard flat so it pushes the uh, bit of wood on the inside as far away as possible. Uh, we're sort of just turning it up to the outside which is bringing the bit of wood uh, on the inside to the outside and then just run the cam over. So push it in, rotate it towards the outside, and then over, and your hatch is on. For the leather, I just treat it about three times, four times a year with the um, with saddle soap. Okay, let's look at putting a reef in now. First step is to um, just take up the boom a little bit by putting a, a loop or two on the topping lift so you can see this holds the end of the boom up so that when we let the um, pressure off the halid and, and the sail comes down you're not going to end up with the boom banging around your head so second step would be to take a bit of this tension up and just pull that reef about halfway in. Third step, just let your, throat, your um, yard halyard just off a couple of inches.
doing that means that you can release the yard and as you do the yard will start to come down as we can see it and the boom at the front here will start to drop down as well the tension's gone completely off the halyard and that is because if we look up at the top a yard slip to the end of the line has been held there by the yard halyard now so now we can grab the reefing line at the front and start to take up the slack and you'll see that, that So you'll see that this reefing line now has pulled this reefing crinkle down onto tack and you've got a bit of slack sitting here in the uh, lacing but that should still be fine we can now pull the rest of the reef in at the clue using the three reef needles we can now tie in um, reef knots just to gather in that foot of the sail just make sure on the last one you don't tie in the main sheet on the bottom of the boom there as well at both ends you're going to end up with a bit of line uh, the reefing line I've just uh, wrapped it up a little bit of a ball and st just uh, shoved it into the middle of the sail there at one end and the other it just keeps it out of the way but um, means it's there and available and will come free when you want to shake that reef out and finally put a bit more tension back on that throat halyard so we get the tension up the luff Retention out yard help and take the tension off your topping lift now you got your reef in so to drop your main sail the main thing you've got to watch is you don't invert the yard as we spoke about so the first thing you're going to do is let go of the throat halyard and if the mainsail was completely up the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to sort of drop down uh, by just being held by the yard halyard in this circumstance because we've got the reef on pretty much the tension's gone straight away then get your throat halyard and keep the tension on it so you've got a good hold of it and pull down on the luff and you'll feel the tension on the halyard until you get the jaws in your hand and then you can just bend that halyard and just drop down.